Soy el doctor Hernández Poveda, neurocirujano, experto en longevidad y fundador de Age Universal. Hoy os quiero enseñar una entrevista del doctor David Sinclair, jefe del departamento de longevidad de Harvard y uno de los principales científicos a nivel mundial en el campo de la longevidad, donde habla del presente y el futuro de esta ciencia. Aquí vamos. Es que solo el 10% de nuestra futura salud es determinado por nuestros genes. Y eso es sorprendente, ¿verdad? Estamos told que el DNA es nuestro destino. And at most it's 20%, but it's certainly not the majority. So, I, well, he, here's one thing I know, um, that there is no biological law that says we must die, right? There is nothing that says we can't live as long as a whale. Whales are very similar to us genetically. They have warm blood, they're conscious, they have babies, they have milk. They can live 200 plus years and our DNA is not that different. So what is it that allows a whale to live 200 years and us to live on average 80 years? There's something special and it's not just in the genes. There's something else that we think we've found that makes a big difference. And so I, I don't like to put numbers on it because I think that it's like asking someone 300 years ago, what's the fastest humans can go? And they probably say a horse would be the fastest a human could go. Uh, but we now know, you know that there really is no limit except the speed, close to the speed of light for humans. I think the same is for aging. We're at a turning point in medical history where we finally understand what's driving aging and in large part how to slow it down and we're getting insights into even how to reverse that process. The idea that aging isn't just wear and tear. Right? We're not just cars that wear out and break. We're living organisms and the, we have repair systems and we're guided by systems in our cells that have a memory. Um, DNA is a memory of the past, right, from our parents, and there's other types of information in the cell that we don't talk about as much, but are more important than DNA for aging, and that's the control systems that control the DNA. We call this the, the epigenome. It's, a, it's structures that, that wrap DNA, DNA up in loops and other things, but to put it simply, aging is like corru a corrupted software program in a computer in, in according to my theory and that's a that's a big deal because it's it's not like a car a computer can be reprogrammed it can be rejuvenated restored and you can run new software on an, on an, an old phone and it can run like a new one and uh, so we we have really good evidence I would never say proof because in biology let alone physics you can't say uh, proof but we have really good evidence that Every cell in our body has the software that gets corrupted, leading to aging. We, can, we actually did this to animals uh, and showed that corrupting their, their epigenome made them age more rapidly. Um, but then we thought if we can break it, we can also fix it. And so we've developed ways to reboot the software of the cell. And there's a memory, there's a backup copy in every cell of earlier information. And that's what the information theory of aging is about, is the in human cells using chemicals uh, instead of gene therapy. And so it's not crazy to think that one day, in the same way we used to think artificial intelligence and cars that drive themselves was impossible, or for future generations, age reversal seems to be something we in our lifespan will see. Um, so I know the, the latest is age reversal in the brain. We've done this in my lab and others have done it. We can uh, cure Alzheimer's in, or at least reverse large aspects of Alzheimer's in a mouse now. Uh, hopefully reversing the age of the human brain will have the same effect, which means that memories will come back, the ability to learn will come back. That's what we're hoping. Uh, we're working, we've shown that we can reverse aging in, in kidneys and liver and... I'll, I'll use my doctor as an example because I, I don't know specifics, but my doctor will say, David, hi, nice to see you after a year, nice of you to call, call in. They are not proactive, my doctor doesn't tell me to come in, I have to make the initiative. I go in, he says, how are you sleeping? Good. How are you eating? Good. How are you feeling good? Okay. What do you want me to do? Uh, come back when you're sick. You know, my point is to him, I don't want to come back when I'm sick. I want you to take care of me so I don't get sick. Now, increasingly, there are a lot of doctors who are getting on the, ban the bandwagon now. Uh, as you probably know, longevity is becoming quite fashionable. So there are some doctors that are up to speed, but most doctors still think that their job is to treat diseases, not prevent them. And certainly they don't think of aging as a medical condition like I do. Well, less than 1%, a fraction of 1% is invested in aging research right now. 
Uh, most of it goes to specific diseases that are caused by aging. Um, but really, my hope is that we'll put more money into understanding the root cause of these diseases, which I believe are all the same. Heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, all mostly have the root, same root cause, the mechanism, the corruption of the software, and the body can no longer cope with the problems of the brain and the kidneys and the liver. That's why I think if, if we reverse the age of tissues like the eye, the body will heal itself and these diseases will just go away like we're resistant to these diseases when we're young. But in my lab, where you know, we're, we're often years ahead of what we talk about, we reverse aging every day. It's not a question of if, it's just that, it's that we do it. Now, the question is, is it, is it safe? I don't know that for sure, but we blasted mice with age reversal technology for the whole life, and the only thing that happens is that they live longer. We, we've spent the last 200 years with modern medicine addressing individual diseases, thinking that we need a different medicine for each one because they look so different. Alzheimer's doesn't look like heart disease, well, a little bit, but not much, diabetes, wound healing, loss of hair, gray hair. But what I'm saying is, according to the theory, is that all these diseases have the same underlying cause. The majority of these diseases is caused by information loss of the epigenome and that we can reverse those. And that the same treatment that will cure, hopefully, Alzheimer's will also cure any other ailment that you have from old age. En Age Universal estamos completamente de acuerdo con la visión del Dr. Sinclair. Utilizamos los últimos avances científicos para revertir el daño epigenético que causa el envejecimiento a nivel celular y en última instancia causa el resto de enfermedades. Al tratar el envejecimiento estamos tratando el Alzheimer, infartos, diabetes y mucho más. Ofrecemos una medicina proactiva diseñada para mantener a las personas sanas y vitales en contraste con el sistema reactivo habitual donde se van curando los problemas según van apareciendo y esperar que no sea demasiado tarde.